Today, we've got a full review and video test of the new Sony ZV-1. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. Now in a second, we're gonna jump into the full review of this, the Sony ZV-1. Uh, but now we're actually filming on a Sony A6400 and I've put the kit lens back onto the camera. So what I'm gonna do now is switch to the Sony ZV-1 so you can instantly see what the quality's like. Okay, so we have now jumped into the Sony ZV-1. What did you think there from the jump between the A6400 and this? Did you notice a big difference in image quality? What do you think of the colors and the background, maybe the skin tones? Let me know. Now, before we jump into this review, uh, we're gonna try and keep all of the settings the same as the A6400. Of course, the lenses are slightly different and the focal length is slightly different. But in this review, I'm gonna be covering everything from absolute beginner stuff to pro level things. So if you want to maybe skip around the video, check out the description below as I'll timestamp the video so you can jump to the bit that you want to see. But anyway, let's get into it. Let's have a look around this camera and see if this is the best vlogging camera you can buy. So if you're looking for a good vlogging camera, there are a few boxes I think you need to tick. Number one, you need a flip out screen. Otherwise, you can't see yourself when you're recording and to ensure you're framed correctly. Now this is the first Sony with a flip out screen and it's pretty good. Next up, you need good audio. The ZV-1 has a fairly decent onboard three directional microphone, but the major plus here is that you can use an external microphone. We tend to use the Rode Wireless Go for our videos. The camera takes the BX1 batteries and more on those later. Now, there's even an ND filter built right into this camera, which is great to see. This helps if you're filming in bright areas or outdoors in direct sunlight. In addition to some great colors coming out of the camera, the ZV-1 supports picture profiles such as S-Log and HLG, which means you can record much more dynamic range. So let's take a look at the video quality and here's what I filmed on my first day with the camera. So let's talk autofocus. This camera has seriously good eye autofocus. Now I'm gonna use the iPhone 11 Pro here on the side. So if you look at the little uh, flip out monitor, you can see around my eye, there's a little box. And even as I move, the box stays on my eye. And this means that your face, when you're talking to camera, will stay perfectly in focus. And I've used other cameras in the past, uh, even the iPhone, a Canon M50. Sometimes you can be talking to camera, you do your best take ever, you play the footage back and you realize your face has gone out of focus, even if it's for a few seconds where it's trying to hunt onto a light in the background. And it can just absolutely ruin the take and it means you have to record everything again. So this autofocus system on the Sony ZV-1 is absolutely exceptional. It's even better than the one on the A6400. So this is a big thumbs up from me for autofocus. So I've come out of the house today to test the microphones on the ZV-1. Uh, now the microphones sound really great when you're in the studio, um, but I thought I'd get outside as it's a pretty windy day. You can see the trees swaying in the background. Uh, so how does it sound 
What's the noise levels like? Can you hear the wind affecting the microphones? Uh, one thing about the Sony ZV-1, they do include a dead cat in the box. Uh, and if you haven't seen one of these before, this just basically stops wind noise, or it should stop wind noise. So let's put this on and uh, see how it sounds. Okay, so we now have the dead cat installed on the top of the ZV-1. So this now covers the microphone and it should reduce that wind noise. How is the audio now? Obviously, I can only hear this when we're back in the studio, but I'll move around just so you can uh, hopefully catch a bit of the wind and we can see if it's taking that wind noise out. But I'd like that Sony have just included this straight out of the box. I would probably leave this on, especially if you're doing any travel vlogs or if you're walking around. So let me know what you think of the audio quality. So let's talk about this background defocus button. Now this is really cool. If you look at the background of me here, you can see the editor's key sign is in focus, the pillows are in focus and, and the bookcase and things like that. If I press the background defocus button, you'll notice now that it's much more out of focus than it was before. And this gives you that cinematic look that people are looking for. Often when people search for the cinematic look, they're actually looking for a blurry background. And it's good for a number of reasons. I'll just turn it off here. You can see it's all nice and in focus again now. But you'll find actually when you use this, and if, if you do this on a normal camera and just by changing the f-stop, you're actually putting more focus on the subject, on the person talking. This is a really nice feature to see and it's all done with just one press of a button. So you don't need any technical knowledge about lenses and lighting and all that kind of stuff. So we've come down to Saltburn Beach, which is in the northeast of England. So I thought I'd uh, test out the ZV-1 for some high frame rate shots and to test out the zoom built into the camera. So one thing about the zoom you'll notice, actually when you zoom in, you can hear the zoom on the recording. So uh, listen to this. So that's about as far as you can get with the zoom. Uh, you know, it's not amazing, but it's, it's pretty good when you go from this To this. So let's take a look at this slow motion footage. Here is HD recorded at 100 frames a second playing at normal speed. So let's slow it down to 25%. And as you can see here, it plays back absolutely beautifully. I would 100% use this in a project. Next, this is filming at 250 frames a second. And you can see this still looks good. I would still use this in a project and it's amazing you can get this footage from this camera. Next, this is 500 frames a second. And you can start to see here that whilst it looks okay, the footage quality does start to degrade. And finally, this is 1000 frames a second. Now, it's impressive this is on a camera of this budget, but to be honest, I would never ever use this in a project. I think the quality is just far too degraded. And you know, to be honest, I think 100 frames a second looks much better slowed down to 25%. But let me know what you think. Okay, so we're walking with standard stabilization turned on. And this is probably what I would have on most of the time. Uh, from what I've seen in edit so far, it's not the best, you know, some cameras like the GH5 have much better image stabilization, but this is okay. I think you can work with this. Uh, it's not too off-putting like it is with the A6400, and you can also add some extra stabilization in post, in Final Cut or Premiere. 
Uh, and obviously there is the active stabilization you can use as well. So this is walking with the active stabilization turned on. This is the maximum amount of in-camera stabilization you can have. As you can see, it crops in much more. So I would probably turn this off and then use standard and then try and stabilize in post. Now this is with stabilization turned off altogether. So it should be pretty shaky because there's no on body stabilization. There's no uh, digital stabilization. It's just <laughs> handheld. So it should be pretty shaky. But I thought I'd record this just so you can see what the footage is like without any stabilization on at all. So this is product showcase on the ZV-1 and essentially it means you can hold something up to camera and that object will go into focus. Now usually with a camera like this, let's just put this up here, you can see that's in focus. You couldn't do this. If you uh, held it like I am now, my face would still be in focus and this would be out of focus. But this works really, really well so you can hold any object up, it focuses on it really well and then the face comes back in. Even really small objects like pens that are sort of semi-transparent still work. So they've done a real great job here. You know, if you're a vlogger, a YouTuber, uh, business user for the first time, and you wanna show off products or maybe something in your videos, this is a great feature to have. I didn't even know I needed this feature until I used it on this camera, and I'm glad it's here because I absolutely love it. So I've been vlogging with the camera now for about two weeks. So let's talk about battery life. The camera uses these very slim BX1 batteries and that's a sort of a pro and a con. The con is that you only get about an hour's worth of battery life with a single battery. The pro is that you can buy these batteries very, very cheap on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get two batteries and a charger for about 15 pounds, which is around $18. So that's not too bad. Okay, so let's go up all close and personal. One feature I wanna talk about is the beauty feature. Now, I've got this set to off at the moment, so you can skin, see the skin looks probably pretty bad. Let's put it down to low. So this should soften the skin lightly, uh, making you look a little bit softer, making your skin look nicer. This is now set to mid. Has that changed anything at all? And let's change it up to high. Now, I can't really see very well on the small flip out monitor, but even on high, I can see it softened it quite a bit. So I wouldn't have this on. I would probably have it, if anything, on low. I think um, you either want it on low or not at all because you still want that sharpness on your skin. So this is on low. Let's have a look at off. And uh, there it is off. And, um, you know, I think if you're like me, I, I do suffer from a bit of bad skin, you know, you get spots and pimples. So this would be a nice feature to have on just if you're a bit more self-conscious or if you've had a bad skin day. So one thing I've been thinking about as I've been walking around with this camera is just how good it is to have a really decent, slim and lightweight camera with you. You know, we all often carry around the A6400 and as you've seen, it's quite a big camera with a hefty lens. And for that, you need to carry around a backpack or a bag. With this, once I'm done recording, I can just put away the flip up screen and then I can put it in my pocket and you're good to go. Now this is something simple that I really like and I wish every other camera had it. And it's just a small LED red light that comes on to let you know that you're recording. I can't tell you the amount of times I've talked to camera, especially if I've been recording on my own. I've been talking for 10 to 15 minutes. I, I press stop or I think I do. And I realized I haven't even hit the record button in the first place. So this little red LED is really helpful if you're vlogging on your own, because when you're looking at camera, at least you'll know you've hit that record button. So there we go, that's my review of the Sony ZV-1. Now, when I purchased this, and I did buy it out of my own money, I wasn't expecting a great deal for it. You know, when people have said to me before, I'm looking for a vlogging camera for my first camera, I always said, just stick with your iPhone. You know, it's the, the phone you've got in your pocket, it films great, and it still does, but you know what, this, is really taking you to the next level. You've got microphone input, you've got a really good built-in microphone, you've got picture profiles, 
uh, the dynamic range on the camera is great. And I would say the picture quality coming out of this is far superior to that of the iPhone 11 Pro. But if you wanna see a comparison video of this versus the iPhone 11 Pro, uh, check out the videos on the channel because I'll have that up next after this video. And we'll also be doing some tests with this versus the A6400. So stick around if you wanna see those videos, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.